So, um, great. So it's now gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker. I think I'd like to introduce Liz Barkley, the UK Small Business Commissioner. This is a small business and consumers affairs broadcaster and writer, a financial inclusion commissioner, chair of the Fair by Design campaign to tackle the poverty premium, and is a non-executive director of the Lending Standings Board and a member of the Equity Release Council Standards Board. Until she took up the role of small business commissioner, Liz was an ambassador for business deadline, a member of the fundraising regulator standards board and ran backinbusiness.org.uk to give small businesses a voice with policy makers. Please post questions in the chat box for our question and answer session afterwards. And we're now going to mute everybody and it's over to you, Liz. Thank you very much indeed, Jackie. And thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I, it's very, very interesting being here uh, and realizing, uh, as I've just said to both Rob and Jackie, that actually, if you were uh, to step into most of the big businesses in the UK and pick out 13 people to put around the table, you would not have the range of skills that we have around the table this morning. And I think that's what we've got to remember uh, small businesses are extremely valuable to the UK economy because of the skills that they bring to that economy. So therefore, it's more important than ever that we support our small businesses and keep the cash flowing. Now, I took uh, the role of the Small Business Commissioner back in July. Uh, it was quite a long process. We are what's called an arm's length body. Our sponsoring department in government is the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. And we are, our remit is quite narrow. Our remit is to help small businesses get paid quicker. And when we're talking about small businesses, we're talking about anyone with fewer than 50 employees. But if you are uh, subject to a dispute over payment, then it has to be a dispute with a bigger business. And of course, we, uh, a bigger business is a business that has more than 50 employees. So therefore, our remit is quite, is quite narrow. We cannot intervene in disputes between small businesses. We can only intervene and help to help in disputes between small businesses and bigger businesses. Uh, so just setting that out at the start uh, in order hopefully to make it clear what we can and can't help with. However, the other thing that we do do is we administer the prompt payment code. And the prompt payment code is a code that has been written and is owned by the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. So we administer that code and the purpose of that code is to try to get the bigger businesses in the UK to sign up to commit to paying the small suppliers who, uh, whose services they use within 30 days. And the commitment that a big business gives if they sign up to the prompt payment code is that they will pay at least 95% of the small businesses they work with, with fewer than 50 employees within 30 days. So we're trying to tackle the late payment problem in the UK from both ends. So um, how can we help small businesses? Well, as I said, we have a dispute resolution service, but I think uh, what we've discovered in the last, uh, in the time that we've been going, we've been running since December, 2017. And in that time, what we have discovered that is that the most important thing to a small business is maintaining the business relationship. So if you're a small supplier, you know, uh, as well as I do, that what you want to do is to be able to go back to your customer and get more work from your customer, because it's always harder to find a new customer than it is to keep a customer you've already got. So uh, small businesses are very reticent to complain about the payment practices of their bigger customers, and therefore we have a lot fewer complaints than we ever imagined that we would have at the outset when we started up in 2017, because it is about trying to keep that business relationship intact. 
Now, we will do all that we can to keep that business relationship intact. If a small business is in a dispute with a bigger business, has tried to resolve that dispute and comes to us, we must do what is in the interests of keeping that business relationship uh, intact, if at all possible. So we would encourage people to come and talk to us. However, what we've also discovered is that simply coming onto our website, and we have, I think, 100,000 visits to our website a year, um, uh, simply coming along to that website and seeing what, it, what the services are that we offer um, and what the regulations are around about disputes is enough in many cases to get that dispute with the bigger business resolved. So many small businesses come along, find, get the information they need from the website and then simply self-help uh, and use that as leverage to get the bigger business to make the payment. And to us, that is definitely a win. So while we may have uh, a number of uh, disputes that we do intervene in and resolve, we also have a number of cases where we are able to supply the information that the small business needs in order to get a resolution. Um, so the question that I am taxing myself with uh, now since the 1st of July is, just how big a problem is late payment in the UK? Uh, there are figures that suggest that about 50,000 small businesses a year fail because of late payment. But what we have discovered is that what we're, we're not simply talking about late payment, as in an invoice that was due to be paid at the end of July, which is now still outstanding on the 15th of September. We certainly do come across some of those cases. More often, what we come across is cases where small businesses have either inadvertently um, or unbeknown to themselves um, signed up to a contract or to payment terms that are much longer than 30 days. So we quite often get uh, small businesses coming to us saying, I haven't been paid. And when the caseworkers uh, research, investigate uh, the dispute, they discover that that small business has actually signed up to payment terms of 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, 180 days, any more advances on that. I've even seen uh, over the course of the pandemic, 360 day payment terms. Now, um, we therefore have got a big job of work to do with the small businesses to make small businesses understand that they have the right to negotiate right at the outset before signing any contract and that they can state their own payment terms if their bigger customer is uh, using their might in order to impose more extended payment terms, then there is a negotiation to be had. But small businesses don't have the confidence to understand that there is a negotiation that they can go through in order to try to get better payment terms. Uh, one, one colleague that uh, we work with quite a lot uh, told me that his average payment terms were 66 days. He was offered a contract by a bigger company and they told him the payment terms would be 120 days. Uh, he went back and said, I'll be bust if that's the case because my cash flow will be too tight. I won't be able to survive and wait for 120 days. Can you pay me please in 30 days? Um, the firm said, oh, our standard payment terms are 120. Let me go back to the payment department, the procurement department, came back and said, we can't pay you in 30. Our processes sim simply don't allow that. We can pay you in 45 days. Can you accept that? Which he did. But having got the confidence to do that once, James now says that his average payment terms are 33 days, which is a big improvement on 66. So there are, there are ways uh, that one can help oneself to get better payment terms as long as you have the confidence sometimes to push back. So the, it, there is a big problem, but there are signs that there is an improving situation. Throughout uh, the pandemic, many of the big, big companies made a 
huge effort to identify the very smallest suppliers they were working with and to make their processes quicker so that, and in some cases they were even paying within seven days their very smallest suppliers. Now there was a lot of self-interest in that, in that you need to have the goods on the shelf to sell to your customers, otherwise your customers are not coming through the door. So there was a bit of pragmatism uh, there in a lot of cases, but it can be done. And so my, uh, what I am saying to the biggest businesses, if I can get close to them, is it can be done. It has been done throughout the pandemic. And we would really like you to consider whether or not your payment practices are fit for the 21st century, given the technology that you have available to you. However, more pushback from the big businesses. It's very hard to identify small businesses with fewer than 50 employees. It's much easier to identify businesses uh, by the turnover or the, by the amount of the order, the amount of money that is involved in the transaction. And that's how therefore we do it. Uh, and there is also a case where we have got a permafrost, as I call it, of middle-sized businesses that simply haven't invested in their payment processes for years. And it still takes, those processes still take longer than 30 days. So in our office, we are trying to get the messages across that signing up to the prompt payment code, committing to paying your small suppliers within 30 days is the right thing to do. It's a sign of an ethical business. It is uh, the kind of business that investors are increasingly wanting to work with. Increasingly, investors are asking the, the, pay, the question, what is your payment process uh, and how quickly do you pay your small suppliers? And we are also pointing out that many graduates coming out of universities or young people leaving uh, schools or training further education courses uh, or apprenticeships are looking for ethical companies to work with and work for, and uh, that if you don't pay your small suppliers fairly, the chances are you don't treat your employees terribly fairly either. So we are trying to get that ethical message across. I'm also trying to get this uh, payment practices considered as a measure in ESG measurements and obligations. The environment, we know when everyone's talking about environmental obligations, people are beginning now to look at their social obligations. And I think payment practices for small businesses sits very nicely in that social environment because small businesses are absolutely vital to their uh, communities. And then I also think that it, it is a governance responsibility. There is a responsibility on boards to understand the payment practices of the firms that they are boards of. And therefore we're trying to get that message across too, that prompt payment, uh, that good payment practices really are part of good governance. Uh, so that's the role, that's what we're trying to solve. Um, I don't think any of you need my tips on how to get paid on time. I would simply say as a small business, be confident enough that you have got the skills. And I come back to what I said right at the beginning. It's very rare that you find 14 people with the range of skills that you and in your introductions laid out. Um, and so you have got those skills. We have got to get those skills into those bigger businesses. That's where they get them from. That's where they get the ideas from. That's where the creativity comes from. Uh, in UK PLC, and we absolutely need to keep pushing this message out. Therefore, if you disappear, you, the small supplier, disappears, that big supplier has to go out again and look again for someone else that can fill that gap. And that is a costly exercise. So therefore, it is in the interests of big business to pay on time. It is therefore, you have got that crowbar with which to... <laughs> Uh, help you negotiate better payment terms. If you are offered a contract, don't throw your hands up and go, yay, uh, we've got three cases of uh, small businesses that did precisely that with one huge fashion retailer and are now regretting it seriously because they are not getting paid because they didn't read the terms of the contract and the terms of the contract are extremely onerous. So 
look at the contract. If there are 120 day payment terms on there, be brave enough like James and say, no, I can't do that. Can you pay me in 30? You can probably negotiate it to a level where you can pay because this is your cash flow we're talking about. And if you don't have the cash flow, what happens? You either go bust, as lots of businesses do in the UK in the first year of their uh, of their existence because of cash flow problems, or you have to borrow in order to fill the gap, which costs you and your margins are tight enough as it is. And so I would say simply make sure that you negotiate your payment terms that you can live with. Uh, go for upfront if you need 50% upfront because you've got to pay upfront. Make sure all of that is in writing. Make it easy for whoever it is who has to pay you to pay you. Uh, so, you know, let's, let's not just accept checks. I keep telling people, don't just accept checks. You know, make sure your, your payment, um, your bank details are on your invoice, but also check who, the person who's given you the work is not necessarily the person who's going to pay you, who is going to pay you, who is your point of contact in the payment department? What's the information that you need on the invoice? Put the date on there, put your bank details on there, put the due date on there right at the top, due to be paid on such and such a date, and make sure you've got good processes in place for reminding yourself when it's due, reminding yourself if it's not being paid, reminding yourself to send reminders and really manage uh, your cash flow and your invoicing system and the more that you do that the more you give your chance yourself the chance to sort things out invoice queries are standard it happens all the time but a payment department is not going to lift the phone and say hello jane um there's a mistake on your invoice it's just not going to happen they're going to wait for you jane to phone up and say you were due to pay me on the 15th of august it's now the 15th of september and you haven't paid uh, you are now late. So they are going, and that makes it later. So uh, just don't rely on them to phone you up and say, uh, you need to make changes to your invoice. Build a relationship with the person who's going to pay you. Make it absolutely impossible for them to leave on a Friday afternoon without having paid your invoice because they like you. <laughs> people pay, people pay people. They don't pay for products. They're buying you. They're not buying uh, your products so give yourself the best possible chance uh, of getting paid if at all possible however the bottom line is that big people in big de pay big payment departments and big procurement departments have never run small businesses they haven't got a clue how it works they don't know the stress it causes not being paid on time they don't know what it's like to lie awake and wonder if you're going to get paid and be able to feed the kids for the weekend and the case that I always tell them about is the woman who arrived at the office of the Small Business Commissioner before my time on a Friday afternoon and simply said, I have nothing with which to feed my kids over the weekend because I haven't been paid. And the commissioner lifted the phone to the payment department, in, to that particular company, asked to be put through to the payment department, explained the situation, and the person in the payment department said, I had no idea. It never occurred to me. I've never run a small business. I've never been in this situation. I am transferring this money to this account now as we speak so that she has the money to pay to feed her children over the weekend. Now, the temptation is always to say, oh, well, that's only 500 quid. That can wait till Monday. No, it can't. And my call to you is, can we please get these messages out. Can you help me to get these messages out to anybody you know in a bigger business so that they will relay them from the bottom up to the top and the top at the, at the top, the chair will say, I want to know what our payment practices is. I want to know that they're fair and I want to know that our small suppliers are getting paid on time. We need to recover as a country and the small businesses are the ones who are going to drive it. I'm asking you to help me get those messages out there. And thank you for listening to me rabbiting on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. That was great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now we're going to have questions and answers. So I'm over, it's over to Rob. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I just wonder if any, anyone had any questions. I'm sure they've got lots of questions. It was a really great, interesting talk. And um, yeah, so there was a 
I don't know if there's any questions in the chat, um, but don't have a question. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, David. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, really just a question to say, to what extent do you think um, it's inefficiency on the part of the large uh, companies rather than a deliberate policy to delay payments? Um, we know there are deliberate policies, David, <laughs> in some cases, uh, because you want to keep your, your books looking good. Now, mm. the question I would be asking myself is, is that because there is a problem underlying it all? Are you really in difficulty? And if we think back to some of the big failures over the past few years, the fact that small suppliers or smaller suppliers were having to wait for payments perhaps should have rung alarm bells in the first instance. So if you are playing that deliberate game, it can go against you because it can mean that uh, your investors actually uh, start doing a bit more due diligence, thinking a bit more seriously, perhaps thinking maybe I should get my money out of here. It's not a very smart game to be playing. However, I do think it still happens, but I do think there's much more incompetence in the system. And what I always say is picture the scene. I come to you and I say, Dave, uh, we need to improve our payment processes. We haven't invested in this for years. Can you give me 250 grand from the kitty in order to do that? And the, the, the controller, financial controller says, Dave, what does this actually mean? And you say, it means we're gonna be able to pay people quicker. And the financial controller goes, you know what? I can think of, a, I think we're paying them quickly enough and we can think of a lot better uses for 250 grand. <laughs> and I think that's been happening quite a lot uh, in that permafrost that I'm talking about. I think the big companies have got it. I think they're getting it. Um, I think they're not all there yet. But if I look at the FTSE 350, for instance, I know that they have to report to government on their payment practices. There are still some that aren't doing it. There are still some, and we're not sure why, there are still some that are probably not doing it terribly accurately, but they are having to look at those processes, which means the boards are having to look at those processes. It's kind of the next draft down where nobody's really looking at this yet and the investment hasn't been made. And I think there is a lot of that going on. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any more questions for anyone? Anyone have a question? I'll quickly check the chat. Um, yeah, yeah, I do. If you, oh, go, sorry, yeah, go, Jackie. Yeah, sorry. You, you mentioned the prompt payment code, and you mentioned that um, a lot of businesses are signing up to it. Um, how many roughly have already signed up to it? Um, we have three thousand three hundred and thirty-five, roughly, I think, at the moment. But if you consider that there are seven thousand seven hundred big businesses, thirty-six thousand. Uh, roughly or 35,600 I think at the last count medium-sized businesses with more than 250 uh, employees then you know we are scratching the surface here <laughs> I, I want to get out there what I would really like ideally is the top five businesses in every sector to be signed up to the prompt payment code and saying to the subcontractors have you signed up to the prompt payment code sure. um, it's the right thing to do so do it Otherwise, we don't want to uh, work with you. And that's what stopped. Uh, basically, it was that cascading situation that stopped so many accidents on building sites. You know, so we've we've really got to take this seriously from that point of view. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. I've got a question here from the, from the chat. I think it's from Tim. Um, he's saying about how he tries to use. Um, so we try and ask customers to pay with orders. And sometimes they struggle. Do you have any technologies or, or um, encouragement you do to get uh, paid? Sorry, to be paid rather than, than offer credit. So, is this all technology you use? Uh, no, no. And uh, I think he said techniques rather than oh, techniques. Sorry, apologies. <laughs> um, well, I, actually, interesting though that you should say that, Rob, about technology. Um, we had a big discussion last week uh, with uh, chaired by Lord Holmes. Um, who is really into digital and into all things technology, especially in the financial services space. Mm. Um, but we had uh, all of the cloud accounting software people, we had the law, the technical law, the, you know, the law companies that are using tech, 
Um, and we were looking at whether or not there's something that we could do at the beginning in order to help negotiate those payments uh, through using technology yeah. so that you take out that slightly adversarial human interaction bit um, that sometimes disrupts the business relationship. So yes, it's we're thinking about it and we're thinking yeah, about I mean... the dispute resolution at the other end. Um, but for Tim, um, I think Tim's saying that you're, I, I, Tim, I, I may be wrong, but are, you're asking your customers to pay when they order, but sometimes you struggle to get them to do that. Um, and of course, um, you're you're offering them credit. You That is in effect what you are doing. You are lending them the money because you are giving them the goods and they still haven't paid you. And of course, this is a big issue and it's been getting bigger over the last few decades, which is why we've seen the proliferation of invoice factoring and reverse factoring and supply chain finance, etc. Somebody always has to pay for that. Uh, where does the where does that cost end up? Usually with you, the small business, or with your customers because you've had to pass it on if you've known to factor it in. But a lot of small businesses don't know they're going to end up in that situation. The techniques simply have to be negotiation at the outset. Yeah, I mean, I always say. I'm not Sorry, sure. Is, is, is my is my uh, microphone working? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Jolly good. Um, so, so, so our business is wine, and um, we have a number of trade customers who expect to get credit. Now, we, for, for us, that's a risk um, for <laughs> for obvious reasons because a yeah. lot of trade customers are going. Uh, you know. Uh, are, are, are going bust, and but then, but then other other custo- other trade customers who pay on a card with their order, yeah, um, they go well. Yeah, that that makes sense because it it I, I, I think they 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 see some value in that. Now, um, it's just really a, a, a general point that if we go through the first you know negotiation and it and it. They, they still say they want credit. I wondered if you've got any, you know, golden nuggets that say, well, you can try this or you, you know, or you can try that. And you're right. It, there's no, there's no black and white answer for this. It's just really sh- shades of gray. Um, uh, 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 but, but yeah, that, you know, that's really it. in your, you know, in your experience, um, have you got any, any thoughts about, encouraging or making it easier for people to, to pay you know to pay when either be, be, before the job is done or when it's like us when it's a fulfillment that they pay before the wine is shipped yeah don't give them the stuff until they've paid yeah, exactly well, yeah. um yes that that is about the height of it because it is it is about negotiation and what everybody in this room is doing by giving their work up front is giving credit and they're in exactly the same position as you. I um, a, a typical case came to me the other day. She said, um, I had an agreement to write a report. I had to hire somebody in to do that, uh, to help me with the research. I paid that person. I then had an, I had an agreement that I would hand over the report and be paid in 14 days, which is a very short space of time in the scheme of how things are generally going at the moment. But when she got the PO number uh, and put in the invoice, expecting to be paid in 14 days, she was told that payment terms were 90 days. And I said, look, you had an agreement. We can, as the Small Business Business Commissioner's Office, we can now intervene and help you to sort that out. And she said, I don't want you to because there may be more work in the pipeline. So until we really get to the point where we are saying to people, no, this is not acceptable, you are borrowing money from me. In fact, you're stealing money from me if you don't pay me on time. If you're not paying me on the agreed terms, then actually it's, oh, it's <laughs> tantamount to theft. And I will take action against it. We're not going to change things. And the problem is small businesses are too worried about us getting involved or helping to resolve the, the dispute because they think that they will lose future work. So it's really about making it very clear at the beginning. What are the terms going to be? And as Dave says, tell them we want the money before we hand over that crate of wine. 
That's what you would do if you were coming around to my house. You would expect me to have paid before you delivered. And why is it so different? You are accommodating other companies who are not paying you when they get the, the stuff because they themselves are waiting to be paid by somebody else. So they're using your credit as credit. And uh, somebody has just said, I asked for two thirds of my fee to initiate the work as all of my work is at the beginning and, the in and then I invoice for the balance on exchange of contracts or signing of a tenancy, it works for me and my solo business. And I think, Tim, it is about being absolutely categoric and saying, no, I'm not handing over until you pay. Yeah, um, I d just really to support what somebody else was saying about, about un understanding the, the individuals um, in the payment process in the customer. Um, I would agree. I, I, I find out I find out which which people are are in the chain to, to get to get the bill paid because underneath all of these automated systems there are people that have to press buttons and if those people yes. are away on holiday, then you know they say they there's they don't tell you you've got you've got to push um, and when I get an, when I get an out of office email. From somebody who should be paying, I'll say, "Well, fine, okay. Who's looking after their? Who's who is who who is who is pre, who is pressing that button? Well, okay. My name's Tim. You don't know me, but I understand you're pressing the button for this. So press the bloody button, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I me. think it, I think it's really worth picking up on that point about knowing your customers, knowing your suppliers, knowing, you know, trying to build that relationship if you possibly can. It's much harder not to pay somebody you know than it is not to pay somebody you don't know. Uh, and I think that's really important. But what I say to, to I say to um, employers, okay, um, you're not going to pay Tim for, for the goods that he's delivering to you today. You're not going to pay him until 120 days time. That's four months. What would happen if you were to say that to your employees, they would tell you that they're going to lose their homes because they'll be evicted or they'll be in arrears with their mortgage and likely to face repossession. They'll be not sleeping at night because they won't have the money coming in. They'll have mental health issues, which will be serious because they'll have a knock on effect to everybody else in, the, in your uh, employ. Um, so really think about this as these are individuals with whom you have basically an employee-employer relationship and treat them in the way that you would treat your employees. And what we're also saying to graduates is when you're in an interview and you're asked, have you got any questions for us? Your question should be, how quickly do you pay your small suppliers? Because that will tell you how they're going to treat you. Brilliant. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much. That was great. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but thank you very much, Liz, for a very, very interesting talk. Excellent. Really good. Uh, so I'd just like to uh, 